Okay, so for Team A, we've got, um, let's see, we've got five players. The first player is 72 inches tall. Then we have a 73, a 76, a 76, and a 78. Well, Team B, we have a 67 inch tall player, a 72, 76, 76, and an 84 inch tall player. Now, just to give you a little bit better idea, an 84 inch tall player is 7 foot and a 67 is 5 foot 7. And on team A, a 72 is 6 foot and a 78 is 6 foot 6. Just to give you kind of an idea of the height in feet also. So now if you look at these two teams, if you went through and you calculated the means, you would find that their means have the exact same value. So for team A, the mean is 75 inches. For team B, the mean is 75 inches. The median for team A is 76. The median for team B is also 76. And their modes are both 76. So if we only looked at the measures of center, it would look like these two teams are exactly the same because they have the same mean, the same median, and the same mode. But if you actually look at their numbers as individuals, you can see they are very, very different teams. On team B, you've got somebody that's only five foot seven, clear up to seven foot tall. And on team A, you only have from six foot to six and a half feet. So these two teams are incredibly different. And what that brings us to now is, well, how do we talk about these differences? And we do that by talking about variation. The first type of variation we would look at should be very familiar. It is the range. And the range tells you the overall spread of the data. It is your highest value, 78, minus your lowest value. So our range for team A is 78 minus 72 is only six inches. Well, for team B, our range, we would take 84 and minus off our 67, and we have 17 inches. So this tells us already that our data is definitely not the same. The ranges are, are hugely different. So that's a measure, one of the measures of variation. And the range can tell us of, I mean, it just gives us a better idea of how spread out our data is. We also have um, another one that is called the standard deviation. And your standard deviation is how far on average, so based off of the mean, the observations are from the actual mean. Now this one's a little bit harder to, um, to begin to understand. But once we, we do a few problems, it'll start to make more sense. So basically what it's telling you is if you have this mean right here of 75, it's looking at your individual values, and it's giving you, you know what, how far um, is each value away from this mean? And it's taking the average of those values, the, the actual geometric mean of those. Our formula for the sample standard deviation is this right here. Notice it's sample standard deviation, so we have an S. And if you just look at this formula, it looks complicated. I mean, there's a lot of things going on here, but we're going to break it down piece by piece. First thing we're going to do is recall that this Greek letter right here is sigma, and it means to add up. Well, our x values, x sub i, those are our data values, minus, here is our x bar, so minus our geometric mean, and we have to square that quantity. Now the addition portion comes last. I have to follow my order of operations. I do inside my parentheses first, so I'm going to do the subtraction problem for each one of my x values first. Then I'm going to square each of those values. Once I get those values, that's when I add. So what I have found is that it's helpful to set up this type of a table here. 
And what we're going to do is we're just going to start by listing our x values. So if I use um, the example from Team A, I had a 72, a 73, 76, 76, and 78. Now my, um, my x bar value, if you recall, we calculated that before, and that was 75. So I'm just going to jot that down up here so I can remember that. X bar was 75. So in this first place, I need to take 72 minus 75, and that's going to give me a negative 3. Then the next one, I'm going to do 73 minus 75, gives me a negative 2, and 76 minus 75 gives me 1, and again I get a 1, and then I get a 3. So here's my difference values, these numbers along the edge here. Then it says I need to square those values. Well, negative 3 squared is 9, negative 2 squared is 4, 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, and 3 squared is 9. Now I do the summation part. So, so far we have taken care of this part of our formula. We've done the subtraction and then we've squared them. Now I need to do the sigma part. So I need to add all these together and I'm going to end up with a 24 there. So right now my formula is the square root of 24 divided by, now it says to take it divided by n minus 1. Recall that n is the number of values I had. So since I had 5, I would be taking it divided by 5 minus 1, which is 4. So now I'm left with s is the square root of 24 divided by 4. Well, we do the division first, so I have s is equal to the square root of 6. And when you take the square root of 6, it doesn't turn out to be perfect. You get about 2.45. So what this tells me is that each individual data point is about 2.5 inches away from my mean of 75. Now, as you look at your data, I mean, obviously, none of these are exactly 2.5 but the mean of the differences so the you know the common average of the distance is 2.5 inches if we went through the same process and did team b you would find that their sample standard deviation turns out to be the square root of 39 which is approximately 6.2 inches and when we compare these two numbers, you've got to think about it in terms of the common average. So in terms of a common average, team B, each player is about 6.2 inches away from the mean. Whereas team A, the team that we calculated, each player is, you know, in terms of the common average, about 2.4 inches away from the actual mean. This is another great indication of how spread out your data is. These numbers right here with the smaller standard deviation are more compact. They're closer together. The bigger your standard deviation, the more strung out and spread out your data is. Now, these calculations can take a lot of time, especially if you get into really big data sets. So you can use a graphing calculator to do these, that ha or any calculator, actually, that has a statistics ability on it. Or you can use, there's some websites out there, and one of the websites that you can use that is really simple to use is easycalculation.com. I've put the website here for you, so if you want to go there and try um, messing with that, you can. Or you can always resort to the chart, and you can do it using the chart. Any way will work. Now, along with the standard deviation, we sometimes talk about a number that's called the sample variance. And this is actually part of the standard deviation. It is just the standard deviation without the square root. So our sample variance is only the portion with the sigma squared divided by that n minus 1. We don't, um, we don't do the square root portion of it. We don't use the sample vari variance much on its own. 
it's usually the sample standard deviation that we'll be talking about but just be aware that the sample variance is the standard deviation formula without the square root portion of it we need to talk about the relevance of our standard deviation and that is first introduced as the three standard deviations rule now we will talk more about this rule when we examine the bell curve but our three standard deviations rule tells us that almost all the observations in a data set lie within three standard deviations on either side of the mean so what that means for us is let's say we take that set of data for the team A basketball players and we knew their mean was 75 and their sample standard deviation was about 2.4 so now our rule says we're going to be within three standard deviations on either side. So if I go three standard deviations out here, I have to think about one standard deviation is 2.4 inches. So if I go 2.4 inches above 75, I would be at 77.4. If I go another 2.4, I'd be at 79.8. And if I go that third standard deviation above, I would be at 82.2. So that's kind of my, my upper point here. This 82.2 is three standard deviations above 75. I can do the same thing going this other way. So if I start at my 75 and I go 2.4 standard deviations below, I'm going to be here at a 72.6 and then if I go another standard deviation I would be at 70.2 and if I go that last standard deviation I would be at 67.8 so here's kind of my lower number so what this is telling me is that almost all my data will lie between 67.8 and 82.2 and if you look back at the values for our, the heights of our basketball players all of our players follow this rule this time now this is not set in stone this doesn't have to happen but what it tells you is that almost all there will be situations where we have a data point that doesn't fall within this range but it's a very good guideline because it is almost all the data will lie within three standard deviations now another way that you could get these two numbers without having to draw a number line and go each standard deviation is to get up to this 82.2 we took 75 and we added three standard deviations so you can take your mean your X bar plus three of your standard deviations to get to the bottom side we took 75 and we subtracted three of our standard deviations so you can take your X bar minus three standard deviations and this will give you both of your endpoints or if you would rather have the visual you can do it out like this on a number line